but that should have made my screen a little bit bigger for you and then you should be able to hide your thumbnails so if you want to get rid of all the little uh, views if you're on a laptop then there should be at, at the top of wherever the thumbnails are you should be able to um, find a little button that says get rid of the thumbnails and so our first pose tonight was same as last time, same as the same as um, same as on uh, Friday. So if you don't have a bolster or you haven't got yourself a couple of pillows, you can just lie flat on the floor. But if you have, you're going to wedge the bolster or the cushions into the back of your uh, small of your back. I have a strap here that is made into a loop. And you can do a couple of things with this. It's quite nice just to loop it around near the front of your ankles and then tuck it up into the creases of the hips. Then the soles of the feet can come together and the knees open out wide and it just cradles. Now that can be nice, but I did this earlier for about 15 minutes and it kind of cuts the circulation off on the front of your ankles. So another alternative is to keep your strap as a loop Take your feet into a figure of, uh, sorry, into a diamond shape and then loop your strap as a figure of eight around your knees like that. So they're around the top of your knees. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, and then your soles of your feet together. And obviously you can loosen the strap as much as you want so that your knees can come out as wide as you want it to be. And then they're just cradled there like that. And you're going to lie down, hands down by your sides, um, elbows on the ground if you can, please. Palms turned up. I've got the extra cushion underneath, or you could roll up a blanket and support that into the back of your neck. Those of you that have practiced in with me regularly will know lots of these cues. And you'll have, after a little bit of experience, so please don't worry about it if you haven't practiced in with me before, but after a little bit of experience, a little bit of experimentation, you will have your own your own style if you like your own um your own props your own way of doing things and it's perfectly fine to have that going on okay if you have an eye pillow you want to cover your eyes over with please do if you are if your head is reclining comfortably then please um try not to let the chin be too high up in the air all right put a bit of length into the back of your neck not necessarily tucking the chin in but just allowing the back of the neck to lengthen and it's so it's quite nice to have um have a sense that the forehead is slightly higher than the chin so you're not jutting your chin in the air too much and there's no strain off of the throat here okay and so i'm gonna i'm gonna sing to you how lucky are you tonight um don't often do this and um i've been practicing a little bit today and i, I quite i do love a chance i do love it i wish i did it more often and so I'm going to go really slowly so that you can learn it and maybe you can sing along with it too. And it goes on, gam, so G-A-M, on, gam, gana pataye, so gana pataye, namaha. Okay, and it just means that you're, you're asking for protection, you're, you're singing to Ganesh, the, the destroyer, the, 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 he makes a pathway basically. He can, he can clear the way for you so that you can see your way through whatever darkness or, or whatever, whatever is in your way so that you can move forwards and or move around. He gets rid of the obstacles. That's his job. So it's Om Gam Gana Pataye Namaha. Om Gam Gana Pataye Namaha 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 Om 
butterfly position. Allow the back of your body to feel supported. Allow the front of your body to feel open and light, ready to receive. The earth will hold you steady. And if we keep our bodies open, willing, ready, then we will allow ourselves to be guided in whatever direction and around whatever obstacles that may be presented towards us. And remember, everything that happens can be seen as an opportunity to learn, as an opportunity to grow. So just spend the next few breaths, maybe the next minute or so, I'm just going to leave you be. You can carry on singing or repeating in your head the chant, Om Gam Gana Padaye Namaha. And I will sound a little, little bell when it's time for you to kind of come back in. So you're going to stay here for maybe two more minutes, all right?
Okay, so just rousing yourself gently, but not too quickly. Just becoming aware of where your feet are, where your fingers are in the space around you. And then you might like to bend the, or to bring the knees back closer together. So you're starting to release the butterfly position for the, for the legs. And then just roll, if you're on supports, even if you're not on supports, just roll to the side. So you're just laying with your knees curled up Maybe your head supporting your hand, sorry, your hand supporting your head as a little bit of a pillow. Just laying on your side, allowing your body to be just gently curled, just softening the abdomen and just bringing about a little bit of balance because the butterfly position, whilst it is awesome, and the majority of people do love practicing it. It can make us feel very open and, and quite vulnerable. So if that's the case for you, please don't worry if those feelings occur, that's quite normal. But it's, so it's really nice to balance it by just coming onto the side after and, and curling up into a little bit of a ball. All right, so we're, we're not making too many changes for our next pose. So I'd like you to gently come up to sit. And if you have a bolster, you are going to slide it a little bit further along your mat because you want some space the other end of it to put your head on the ground. So this is a supported back bend. Um, it's a bit like a very supported shoulder stand, only the legs aren't going to be up in the air. Um, those of you that have got a couple of cushions, you're going to lay it on them. And if you came with your uh, strap or your dressing gown belt, you can gently loop the strap around your couple of cushions, couple of pillows, so that they stay together and stay quite nice and, and bound. And then you're literally going to sit on your on your supports on your bolster and you're going to come down and sort of slide if i take my sorry let's just de take some of these clothes off so you can see what i'm doing a little bit more clearly so you're coming down and your head and your shoulders are going to come down onto the floor so you want your supports to press into the the upper back just behind the heart and then obviously I'm starting with my knees bent. So it's a bit like a supported bridge pose, but eventually what you're gonna do is slide your feet away from you. So those of you that want a slightly stronger practice and have got your dressing gown belt spare or have a yoga strap spare, you can use your strap to bind your thighs together. So you're gonna loop it around your legs so that your thighs stay closer together. And this will get you quite a nice, uh, more refined stretch into the front of the hips. But if you haven't got that, don't worry. Just try to keep your thighs together. But if you, if you find that too strenuous, then let the toes roll out to the sides, let the legs relax, let the front of the hips open. And you'll notice you won't get so much of a stress here in the hip area, hip region, but that doesn't matter. I want your shoulders on the floor, the back of your head on the floor, not too much weight into the head. Try to get weight into the shoulders so that it's balanced, making sure that your neck is uh, nice and free. And you can either have your hands down by your sides here, or you can take your arms alongside your ears and just let them rest on the floor behind you, or you could just make a gentle loop and hold hold the opposite forearm around the top of your head so nothing too strenuous nothing too massive if however you are on your bo uh, bolster or you're on your pillows and you're thinking uh -uh, i don't fancy this isn't working for me then you could instead do a slightly different variation where you take the bolster or the cushions across the mat and you lie in a supported back bend like this so you're still in the same position but you've got the bolster going across the mat and maybe the legs stretched out but you probably will need to put extra cushions underneath your uh, sit bones underneath the back of your hips to take the weight of your pelvis because if it's just hanging around in midair that's just going to be too strenuous 
to stay in the pose for any length of time. So I'm just going to come and have a little check, wave at me if you need a hand, if you're not too sure. But you all look good. I'm loving, I'm loving looking at you all lovely and long across your mats. And if you need me, hi Carol, I can see you now. I couldn't see you before. <laughs> no, I can see you. <laughs> good. Okay. So the only person that I haven't seen yet is, and I'm just going to have a look at who it is. One more yeah so Vivian I can't see you I'm hoping that you can see and hear me because you're on my screen but um yeah good and so let's take some breaths now we if you were practicing with me on Tuesday then we did some work on the sa ha breath so as you breathe in you can imagine that your breath is making the sound sa, and as you breathe out, it's the sound of ha. And this is very, can be very soothing. And we talked about how, not necessarily that we want, we, we don't really want the breath going right down into the belly here. What I want you to think about is the very bottom of your rib cage, whereabouts your diaphragm is. And if you think also that sort of tucked quite nicely in that region is your liver. And the liver and its, and its responsibility for keeping the body healthy, keeping the body cleansed, um, invigorating the blood, making sure the blood is very rich and, and clean and, and nourishing for the body. And we can, we can invite that in with the energy of the breath. So if you keep breathing in your Saha breath and think about the diaphragm and how it moves naturally with your breath and how it soothes and massages the organs of the body, in particular here the liver is what I want you to think about on the right hand side of your abdomen. You're going to stay here for another two minutes. So that's maybe 10 to 12 breaths. Okay, so again, we need to come out of the pose just as carefully as we got into the pose. So take your time, you have some options. You can either shuffle so that you, you maybe slide a little bit further down and off of your supports, or again, bringing the chin towards the chest to protect the neck, you can roll to the side and maybe curl the knees up a little bit towards your tummy. And just lie, just lie in a nice, soft, fetal position. So 
Okay. So supporting yourself as you gently lift yourself up. And so we've done some quite nice heart opening, uh, thoracic releasing poses. So we're going to counter pose that with child's pose. And I've got the, my bolster in front of me. So you can have your cushions or your pillows in front of you, or you can just use nothing at all. It's fine. You don't have to have anything. I've got my big toes together and my knees are as wide apart as the mat is. Um, feel free to go a bit wider if you want to, um, and that's fine. If you struggle to get your bottom down onto your heels, if your knees are a bit grumpy here, then a cushion underneath to give you a bit of elevation is quite nice. The alternative, however, if your knees really aren't happy, is to lie on your back and hug your knees in towards your chest. So you're doing the same pose is a little bit more active, but you are not then putting any pressure onto your knees. And then you're literally going to come down and let your head rest and turn your head out to the side. Now you could, if you feel that you're too low down, put extra things underneath your, your bolster or your cushions. So if you've got an extra cushion on the sofa next to you, or your blanket, for instance, it is better to have your head slightly higher than your hips. So if you're in this position, like for instance now, I've got this quite nice flat line along my back, and my head is okay, I'm happy with that. But if you find that you're coming into the pose and your head is much lower than your hips, because your hips are in the air, that's not okay. All right, so you want to try and get your hips down low so that your head can be almost in the same line as it. And if it isn't, you prop up whatever it is that you're lying on so that you can elevate yourself, okay? So have a little bit of a play around with that and let yourself come into it gently. Allow your knees to to be happy here. An alternative also is to, to wedge uh, uh, the strap, the belt, into the back of the knee joint. That will help to keep the knee joint open so that it doesn't feel like you're, you're restricting or squashing it too greatly. Um, the great thing that we often say is to use a, use a face cloth. So if you're one of these, if you, if you need something into the back of the knee joint for these sorts of positions, then for your yin practices with me, it's a good idea to have just a couple of face cloths that you can roll up into a sausage and just wedge into the back of your knee. All right, so this is wonderful. This is a really nice surrendering. We can, we can allow now the front of the body to, to become soft. And we can direct the breath now really nicely into the back of the kidneys. So if you think about the kidneys and their relationship to the element of water. Now water is one of the most, obviously it's a, it, one of the most important elements, one of, the, one of the key elements within our own bodies because there's so, such a high percentage of our own body is made of water. But what we have to think about with, the, with water is its capacity to change. And it is therefore able to become a solid, a liquid, and a gas. And so it has the ability to, to manoeuvre, to, to, to work its way around obstacles. And we see that in rivers, don't we? We see that in rivers when there's a big boulder in the way, the, the water moves gracefully around the boulder and eventually the power of the water starts to starts to erode the bolster that the the the, the, uh, the, the uh, stone away so um so think about that in terms of our own pathways and what we're working towards and as you breathe into your kidneys to invigorate them to nourish them to feed them feed them with your breath feed them with the energy that's going to help you to stay lovely and balanced and strong and capable, capable of seeing our way through, of holding ourselves steady in times of uncertainty.
Allow your Saha breath to give your mind a focal point now. And in between each inhalation and each exhalation, enjoy the silence within the pause. begin to think about moving and this moving that we're going to do here is to bring the hands more close to the shoulders and sort of peel yourself away from the ground so you're coming up into an all fours position and maybe just moving the knees a little bit closer together underneath you and rounding your back into a cat stretch so you're accentuating the the shape of the spine that you've just been in for the last few minutes. And then you're going to dip the tummy, lift the tailbone, let the heart lift gently look out in front of you. And just take a few more rolling cats and howls, please, as you come into a lengthened back body, chin to chest, your arms long, and then inhaling, front body lengthening. So it's the two moves that we've done so far with the spine is this nice little bit of flexion, little bit of extension. Okay, then after your next cat, you're coming back to a neutral spine. And we're going to keep the supports there underneath us. So we don't need to change anything. We're just going to change our position. And this is Twisting Tiger. I don't think we've done this for quite a while, you and I, those of you that have practiced yin with me regularly. Um, so we're going to sit to the side so that the bolster or the cushions, the pillows are up onto uh, the edge of the hip here. And then you've got your legs crossed. Now you could just, just literally have them wherever you want, okay? So just as they're comfortable, you could put your knee resting into the insole of your, of your foot if you want, as I am now, or tuck the foot underneath, whatever is good for you. The most important thing to do here is that we come into the pose when we're exhaling and we exhale and keep the pelvic floor lifted and the belly in just to make sure we have stability in the lumbar spine and the back of the pelvis. So I'd like you to take a nice breath in and, and sit up tall. And as you breathe in, lift the pelvic floor a little bit, keep it lifted. As you breathe out, start to turn to face the bolster, hands either side, and you're laying your body down and maybe taking your gaze in the opposite direction to your knees. But if that's too strong, just have your uh, nose in the same direction that your knees are in. And you're just bringing yourself to lie down. So it might take you a little bit of adjustment to get into a comfortable position. You might need to stay in the pose for a minute or two before you're ready to maybe turn the head away from the knees and take the twist, the rotation a little bit more deep 
directly into your body. However, yeah, let yourself surrender down. If you've not got props, again, this is another one that can be practiced really easily without anything at all. You can lose all the props um, altogether and just lie in this twisted position. Um, I quite like the props. I like the element of having these supports underneath us because it means that we can just really let ourselves sink and, and, and sort of, it's almost like we're melting and molding ourselves into them and, and becoming, becoming one with them. They become part of the pose. They become part of us in the pose. So close your eyes. Allow yourself to sink. And that means get yourself closer to the ground. Instead of resisting, we have to give in, we have to allow, we have to get that softness in. And that's, this is something, this is a common feature in our yin exploration. So let the breath settle, find your Saha breath, and then for the rest of the time in this pose, enjoy where the breath is restricted and enjoy where the breath has freedom to move, to travel, to expand. And conversely, enjoy the opposite where the breath can't quite get into. Are you able to unlock any areas of your body with your breath? Those that want to spend the next two minutes uh, taking a little bit deeper, you know, lift up slightly, you know, turn your tummy a little bit closer towards the bolster and turn a little bit more deeply. And that's only if you want to take it just that tiny step further. If you feel that you're in the pose and you, you become quite nice and easy and you want just a little bit more, a little bit more rotation, a little bit more depth. So that is your cue to maybe walk the knees a little bit, oh, sorry, walk the hands a little bit closer in towards you and to start to peel yourself away from your supports, away from the floor and just sit upright for a moment when you get there, take your time because all we're going to do is just turn ourselves around so that we are going to come into the twist the other way. So you're sitting the other way round, you've got your legs crossed comfortably, you're going to inhale and lift the pelvic floor at the top of the inhalation, keep it nice and lifted, 
begin to turn yourself towards your support, coming into a lying twist, turning maybe your gaze in the opposite direction to the knees or waiting some time before you get there to do that. Closing your eyes and settling yourself down, just taking some breaths initially just to find, find a position that is comfortable, find a position that feels you feel that you can remain in because that's remember that's one of the tapas of our of our yin yoga practice is that we we resolve to come into stillness and so that sometimes requires just a little bit of fidgeting a little bit of adjusting around so take your time and if you feel that you've gone into it to your to your deepest extent, then that is brilliant. Remember, don't go too far so that you're unable to breathe. Find soothing saha breath and let the soothing nature of the breath seek out spaces, enjoy those spaces, enjoy that sense of freedom and lightness. And then also allow those opposite spaces to be found, the darknesses, the tightnesses, the, the areas that are restricted because of the position that you are in. You want to go a little bit deeper by lifting up and turning a little bit more, then go for it. Take that opportunity to, you might find that you have that extra bit of mobility. Good job. Okay, so again, thinking about peeling yourself away from the ground. And then you might just want to sit with your legs out in front of you, maybe just straighten them away, maybe lean back into the hands and give the legs a bit of a wobble, legs a bit of a shake, just move in any way that feels good. Very nice. 
okay so now for a really delicious side body stretch and so we're going to take reclining mermaid so you need to put your bolster across the mat somewhere in the middle or your cushions and you might want to get your blanket now as well and if you've got your blanket folded up if you can roll it into a sort of small sausage and then if you can see that and that's going to go here a bit like this so you've got a rolled up bit and then a flat a bit and that's going to be supporting the side of your neck and your head then you're lying on your side and you're going to put this is the most important bit you're going to put your shoulder on the floor so the whole length of one arm is on the floor and then you rest your head down and get the the fold or the roll of the blanket up. So this, this area of the body is the most important bit. So you've got to make sure that the whole arm, including the shoulder, is on the floor and the side of the head is supported. What's going on here? Not so important if you like, but we still need to be supported. So a bolster here is great. Now mine, because it's got so flat over time, I've got my my hip is on the floor. If your hip is off of the floor, then you might want to put something else underneath it. So maybe another cushion, another blanket, a book, it doesn't matter, a yoga block if you've got one. And then you're going to keep your bottom knee bent. So if you can see that my bottom knee, my bottom leg, the knee is bent, and I'm going to rest my knee of my top leg onto the foot of my bottom leg. And then I'm going to cartwheel my top arm all the way up and over. So there's, there's a little bit of, of stuff going on here, but essentially you're lying on your side in a bit of a banana shape and lengthening one side of your body. All right. No, one, no one's waving at me too much. If you need a hand, if you're not sure, um, but do try and get the shoulder onto the ground, the bottom shoulder. And this is lovely. So we can we can really close the eyes here, let ourselves relax, let ourselves settle into the support here. And Okay, so we're going to add in an option, an optional back bend. And all this means is that you're going to roll back slightly. So do make sure that you have got enough support behind you. So you're rolling back just ever so slightly so that your armpit kind of faces the ceiling. Maybe the back of your hand is on the mat. If it's not quite come down to the floor, then put something underneath it if you can. And then the, the, the top leg kind of rolls so that the rolls with you so that the knee is uh, pointing to the ceiling, maybe the toes point to the ceiling as well. So you're kind of in a back bend, side bend position, really lovely. So you're getting more of a, a lengthening sensation into the front of your body. I'm, I started off lying on my left side. So this is going to really be stimulating the, the side of my body where my liver is breathing quite nice and deeply into my right lung so lots of capacity there for my breath to be able to nourish 
my blood. So you're going to take just a couple more breaths here. I should have added that if you get any kind of pins and needles or tingling with the arm above your head like this, then please just bring it down, rest it down by its side. But most of you know well enough by now that you shouldn't be in any pose that um, causes you any discomfort or any, any unwanted feeling in your body, any unwanted sensation. Okay. So we're going to come out of the pose now by gently rolling forwards, bringing the arm back down by our side, bringing the straight leg so that the knee is bent and we're back into that fetal position, albeit very briefly, because we're going to pick ourselves up, peel ourselves off of our supports, lift ourselves up gently, and then we're going to turn around and do the same pose on the other side. So just bring yourself so that you're rolled over. The uh, bottom leg, remember the knee starts off with the knee bent. The top leg is a little bit more straight, but the priority is to get your arm all the way up to where your shoulder is. If now that I'm and the other way around, you'll be able to see. I want your shoulder all the way onto the floor, even if that means that your hip comes off of the ground a little bit, it's okay. Wedge the blanket into the neck so that you are fully supported. And you can let the head kind of go into the side bend shape. That's absolutely fine. Top arm cartwheels up and over your head so that you are indeed lying onto the side of your body in a really lovely, long, stretched out side bend. Super, so breathe all the way along the side of your body. Think again about your Saha breath. Keep the breath even. If you like to count the breath, that can sometimes help with keeping the spaces equal. Allow a natural pause to occur between each inhalation and each exhalation. And enjoy the 
sound of quiet in between each breath. Right. So again, maybe bending the straight leg. We didn't roll backwards actually. Let's stay where you are. Stay where you are. Don't move. <laughs> I beg your pardon. So let's just take a couple of minutes to roll back and to open the armpit. Remember, this is optional. So you're sort of rolling the side body so that it faces the ceiling. So the hip, the knee, the toes, they face the ceiling the armpit, the palm, and it's creating that extra little bit of length, that extra bit of sensation, and it can just be really, really pleasant to take this kind of back bend shape. However, if, it, if you didn't do it on the first side, or you don't fancy doing it on this side, leave it out. Stay where you are. All right, so let's gently bring ourselves back. Draw in the top leg, float the arm down back by our sides. And you can then use your hands to support you as you come round and up to sit. Okay. So we come to our penultimate pose, the final pose going to be Shavasana. And um, I'm going to allow you to stay in that one for as long or as little as you like. Um, I think we'll take a longer Shavasana uh, on the Sunday practice with you because we've got the afternoon to kind of recover and to, to wake up. But at this time of the night, if you take a Shavasana and you nod off to sleep, then the chances are that you won't get to sleep until midnight or beyond. So it's probably better just to take either a very brief one or to leave it out completely and just take yourself off up to bed. So our penultimate pose before our mini Shavasana is legs up the wall. So if you have a wall and you want to use it, then be my guest. Um, I'm going to say to you, put your put the back of your hips on a support. So it is a bit precarious doing it near the wall because you have to take your bolster or your support near the wall and then sort of sit on it and then come down to lie and bring your hip, your legs up the wall like that. Or you can just go for the no wall option where you've got the back of your hips supported, maybe on some blankets, maybe on cushions. Make sure they're not going to be too wobbly, though. You're not going to slide off of them. And then you need to position it so that it can support the back of your hips, but not, not dig into your lower back. And then you can effortlessly, or you should be able to effortlessly take the feet up into the air. 
and they can they can kind of hang there without you having to work very hard at all to hold them. The arms can just rest out by your sides or you can take them alongside the ears. We've done quite a lot of that tonight um, in general. So if you feel that you've had enough of having your arms in this position, then please feel free to adapt as, as you wish as necessary. But this is nice. This is, this is one of the most ultimate restorative poses. And maybe yet yeah, we haven't done a lot with our legs, unless you came to practice this morning and you're, you're feeling it in your thighs this evening. So this is, this is really beneficial for the legs, but it's also very soothing for the, for the heart, soothing great for the circulatory system, great for, for moving the lymph up towards the lungs, which is where we need it to go. We need to, we need to keep the fluids of our body circulating, and that includes the lymph. So you're going to hang out here, maybe put your eye pillow on if you've, if you've got one to hand, or cover your eyes with a jumper or with your, with your scarf or your strap, whatever you've got to hand. Close the eyes, let the back of the head rest, and just hang out with the legs high up. You might notice here that because you have maybe shortened the, the space on the front of your throat, that the sound of sa and ha becomes a little bit more natural. You don't have to work too hard to find that sound as you're breathing. And so maybe explore that. We've got a very gentle uh, Jalandra Bandha, a very gentle throat lock going on here. Okay, well done everybody. So I'd invite you to bend the knees and bring them closer in towards your chest for a little hug in. Now 
And then if you're coming into Shavasana, we're going to be in Shavasana for five minutes. If you're leaving to, to go off to bed, you're very welcome to depart if you want to, to leave the Shavasana. Or you can do the Shavasana sitting, just take a, a seated med opportunity to meditate perhaps. Um, those of you that are coming into Shavasana, you might just want to slide your, your bolster or your cushions downwards towards the back of your legs so that you've got them there supporting you and it allows your the back to, to rest a little bit more deeply. You can put something underneath your head if you like, cover yourself with your blanket if you want to, if you notice that your body temperature is gonna cool with you being flat on the floor. Hands um, out by your sides with your palms turned up or you could rest your hands. Maybe take a yoni mudra, which is the thumb and the index fingers touching to make a kind of, this is, it, yoni is womb. So it makes a womb-like uh, shape. And you lay your hands then on your, on your abdomen between the navel and the pubic bones with the index fingers pointing downwards in the direction of the toes. And you could rest your hands here in the yoni mudra on the front of your of your belly but sometimes if that's uncomfortable if it means that your shoulders feel tight or restricted please just leave it out it's also quite a nice one to do when you are sitting so as an alternative if you are if you're not lying down for shavasana this evening if you've opted to sit then you could take your yoni mudra uh, gesture, just the, the mudras are a seal. They're like a they're they're a, they're a seal or a gesture to kind of hold the energy in. And the thumb represents the universe. The the finger, the index finger, represents the individual consciousness in your in you yourself. And so by bringing these together, you are uniting the, the parts of yourself with the, with the consciousness of the universe. And for us, for, for women particularly, this the, the yoni, yoni mudra taps into the yoni, the yoni shakti, the, the, the feminine energy, feminine womb-like energy, which connects us to the moon, connects us to the, to the earth, connects us to the cycles and the seasons as we navigate our way through, through change and through turbulence. So just resting here, just letting the back of your body settle and sink. Taking a nice good breath in, deeply breathing into your body and letting the breath go as though you're sighing out any tiny last bits of, of tension or of tiredness. We're going to stay here for another couple of minutes. And maybe if you like, you can join me in your, in your thoughts or in even out loud with our, with our mantra to, to Ganesha, the, the remover of obstacles. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha 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 
Becoming aware of your fingers and your toes and starting to move them around as you at the same time turn your head from side to side. Take a stretch out any way that feels good. And then you can bend your knees and gently roll yourself over to one side as you make your way back up to sit. Lovely. Okay, so we're going to finish by coming to sit any way that works for you, any, any comfortable seated position. So we just end and close the practice off together. Let's take the fingertips down by your sides. Take a lovely big breath in, bringing the hands together above your head. And as you breathe out, bring the hands down and rest them in front of your heart. Closing your eyes, relaxing your shoulders and breathing gently in and out. And you might like to repeat this with me. This just a little closing uh, prayer if you like to, to finish off our practice. So with great respect and love, I honour my heart, my inner teacher. With great respect and love, I honour my heart, my inner teacher. With great respect and love, I honour my heart, my inner teacher. Namaste. Good job, lovely, lovely work everybody tonight. Well done. Namaste to you all. Let's scooch over.